Now, Michael Schumacher's family have been keeping a bedside vigil at the hospital where he remains seriously ill this morning. Yes, he's in a critical condition following the skiing accident in the French Alps. His doctors have said they cannot guarantee his recovery because it's too early to predict the future. Well, someone who knows more than most about the impact of a serious brain injury is Olympic rower and adventurer James Cracknell. And James, you may remember, was hit by a fuel tanker while cycling in America some three and a half years ago and was left in a critical condition. He suffered life-changing injuries and uh, James joins us now from Devon. Good morning, James. I mean, what were your immediate thoughts upon hearing of Michael's accident? Did it bring certain thoughts back? It was interesting. For me, no, because I was in a medically induced coma and I had no memory for six weeks, but I was, I was watching uh, my wife Bev listen to the, to the press conference at 10 a.m. yesterday when they said some very similar things that Michael wouldn't have survived if he hadn't been wearing a helmet and had an operation to reduce the swelling in the brain. and. I remember her telling me that at that stage the doctors were saying the brain's running the show and, and that's going to be what hopefully Michael will be happy to come to terms with over, over the next number of years. But first he's got to get out of the, the horrible situation that, that he and his family are in at the moment. Very, very tough. So how did your accident affect uh, you and the family? You were in a coma weren't you, for, for a long time. Just remind us about when you, you came to and how you then progressed. Well, I think the, the, the first thing is that a brain injury is, is often referred to as the, as the hidden illness. And it's also, in a very fortunate way, that not many people come across it. So it's good, it's not especially common, but it's bad in that there is no sort of perceived knowledge of it. And, and I work very closely with Headway, the Brain Injury Association, and they helped me and my family understand the changes that would be affecting our life and then how to respond to them going forward. But in terms of a timeline, that there are things that the Schumachers would accept now that um, they probably wouldn't in, in two or three years. The first thing is to, for Michael to survive. Um, and then there will be a number of things that, that transpire over, over the time. And, and that goes from... The, whether he can, he can live life unaided, whether he can um, have facial recognition issues, whether he can um, have personality changes, whether he can organize, manage, um, and have full function of, of all his capacities. And then there's, uh, there's, there's obviously the, the brain controls everything from hormones to um, behavior to memory to a huge amount. And so there's little things that left with which at the start you'd think aren't, aren't a big problem at all compared to where he is now so i have no sense of taste or smell and that's a small thing but actually it does affect your life i have epilepsy now and these are all sort of things that are on the way but they're, they're hurdles that you have to overcome and, and the crucial thing i think for for anyone who's who's been through or going through a situation is that you need to have people around you who are prepared to ask you tough questions and get you to be self-analytical because it's not like recovering from a broken leg. You have to be the one to rest when you need to rest and to and just to keep retraining and relearning and, and making sure you set the targets. And then that's the one benefit that, that Michael Schumacher will have is that he's always set incredibly high targets for himself. So he'll say, right, I'm going to get back to that point and, and he'll, he'll sort of progress back to there rather than accepting what's t what, what's the limits placed on him he's never been someone to accept limits and and that's going to be absolutely crucial for him and his family going forwards is not to set those limits but the most crucial thing is to is to get through the next week yeah and we know you've done that uh, despite some difficulties because I, I think i read that you know in your in your case it, it affected your personality but with the help of the charity you mentioned and with the help of your family you, you got over that and now now you're, you're going to stand as an mep so your recovery is, is well on the way is it not no, I, I think it's, uh, for me, in, in a way, similar to the Olympics. The Olympics was something I did, it's not who I am, and, and the brain injury is something that happens to me, and it's not going to define the rest of my life. And, but part of the, you know, I've seen reports about Michael Schumacher, he's got a lesions on, 
on his brain, and I got hit on the back of the uh, back of my head, um, and, and my brain fra- crashed to the front of my skull, damaging the frontal lobes, which control, do control personality, the ability to plan. King, and I wanted to show by, um, you know, putting myself forward and, and standing forward, and hopefully getting elected for the European Parliament, that I can cope with those things and, and the only person that sets limits on, on what I can achieve is me and, and Michael Schumacher will be far in excess of me of, of setting tough high standards on himself and he's going to need the support of his family, his friends, his business colleagues to support him, comfort him but also challenge him when, when he needs to be and, oh. and I really, really hope he gets to that position. We, do, we all do as well. We all do as well. And, and James, thank you very much indeed for taking time out to talk to us in mm. the rain, I think, uh, th- this morning and a, and a happy new year to you. Take care. You too, you too. Thank you. Take care, James. Thanks very much indeed. Now, still ahead.